throughout the day. Yeah, this one for me, it, it's always, it's like a soap opera with the Japanese, I'd say especially on the women's side. You go, you've got Ai Fukuhara changing the sport, bringing so much attention to it. And since following in her footsteps, I mean, Kasumi Ishikawa and now the whole generation, I mean, they're spawning players right now. You got 16 year olds, 17 year olds, a 13 year old who's junior world champion. Of course, that's on the men's side. But Kasumi Ishikawa, 24 years old, playing against recently just turned 17, Miu Hirano. All eyes on Miu Hirano right now. Umpire for the match, Kim Jong Suk from Korea. Talking about hobbies for the Japanese players. We'll get into that. I guess go ahead. I guess it's hard having hobbies when you're practicing six, six hours a day. I was talking with most of them, interviewing them, and they're all practicing a lot. Although Mizuki Morizono told me her hobby was climbing mountains. And that was very surprising for me. Yeah, that's not something that you can do very quickly. Like between practice, you can't just pull out your cell phone and climb a mountain. It takes a little bit of time. It's funny, they have that actually Korea. A lot of people hike here. There's a lot of mountain climbing here. I mean, you can see men and women of all ages dressed up in their striped athletic wear and their pants with zippers on them and their sun hats just staying fit well into their 60s and 70s hiking mountains. The, the funny thing was we were we were having a translator translator mm -hmm. and she said the hobby the hobby was naming the hobby was the only thing that she actually said it in English by herself. Well then you know she's good at it. If she's learned it in English that means she wants to express it. I double checked the translator to make sure and that was it. <laughs> Mountain climb she's like base jumping? Oh, I'm not playing table tennis, I'm base jumping, you know. I forgot what they call the flying suits where you see like people that look like flying squirrels and jump off of mountains. Amazing. Either way, Kasumi Ishikawa to start off this best of seven. Now the backhand of Miu Hirano, as you recall from her last match, was just dominant. Played Zheng Jian of Singapore. Quite a match it was. Forehand side, that swing is so huge. The amount of twist and turn she put into that, it almost seemed like she expected the point to be finished. They must have known each other very well. They, might have, they must have played together many times. So basically I think they, they, they know exactly what they have to do. Well, you played for a national team for a long time. I mean, when you were playing one of your national team players, how much of an advantage did you feel you had knowing their game? Because it's reciprocal, right? It's the same on both sides. Depending. Sometimes somebody has the advantage. And like in this case, it's not always the, the person you would think will have the advantage. Flash, I'm assuming. Can we a flash? There is one light. Oh, it looks like the camera light. That orange light, is that what you're looking at? Yu Hirano was also ja uh, Japanese national champion this past year. Also inside the team, we are talking about the veterans or the, the one that more, year ha more years has passed has spent in the in the team. Mm -hmm. So that sometimes can influence as well. Oh, experience, right, yeah. Kasumi Ishikawa is definitely, I mean, been here mentally, it seems like she should be the stronger player. From a skills standpoint, I mean, Miu Hirano's brought out aggression on both sides that we haven't seen from a Japanese player. I mean, anyone who's playing on top of the table like that usually has pips on the back end. Right, Aifukuhara, Mima Ito. While their pips are different lengths on the backhand, they both play right on top of the table. Actually, Minami uh, Ando as well. Medium pips on the backhand, inverted on the forehand. But Miu Hirano's aggression early in the rally, she stays confident. It's going to be very tough to beat. Kasumi Ishikawa giving it right back. 
pulling a Mew Hirano on Mew Hirano. Good read on the serve, almost solid side spin. A lot of pace. Ooh, the yo was directed right at Mew Hirano. Fierce. Wow, maturity. Waits for that ball to drop, has a little time, breaks the rhythm and spins it. This is also because she sees Kasumi Ishikawa backing off the table and knows it's gonna be an uncomfortable shot. Ooh, right into the face. Actually, the last time I saw someone get hit in the face like that was Miu Hirano. I think she was playing Ju Yu Ling and she got an edge ball or a net, didn't apologize. The next ball hit the edge of Ju Yu Ling's racket. Oh, not the face, the chest. It happened so fast and the way she reacted, I thought it was the face. Ooh. Maybe she was rattled by that rib cage shot from the ball before. I will say we've talked about the forehand flip a lot today. Miu Hirano has an excellent forehand flip, but the touch of Ishikawa. I think the ball was still on the rise, just lifted a bit much there. Pretty strong let receive. Sometimes when you see these aggressive actions, you sort of wonder what's the relationship on the team, you know? How do these people get along? Oh. There it is, that's the backhand. Anyway, for sure they're fighting for the position in the team as they're all very good players and they're all high ranked. So it's, it's nothing personally, I think. It's just the position at the table, at the, in the team. Yeah, it's interesting. You never know when it becomes personal for some of the players, but they are professionals, of course. Oh. It's their career, and I think it's clear that right now, if Miu Hirano wins this match and ends up winning the tournament, that her world ranking could be shockingly close to that of Kasumi Ishikawa. And we all agree that the, um, the how they're looking at the table has nothing to do how they look outside the table. We all see them very concentrated and serious while playing. And then they're so funny outside the table. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, these two both have an Ask a Pro anything. You can see them being really funny. From singing to Mew Hirano's dance moves. Right now she moves ahead three points though. One thing I will say Kasumi Ishikawa is especially good at is the short stroke sort of returning with topspin. And this is a little bit more typical, it seems, in the women's game. These fast strokes that, are, that seem a bit more reactive, keeping the racket really high for the fast rallies. But that's just too strong. Takes the aggression early in the point and then plays the other corner. It's rare to see Hirano lunging so far side to side. The quality and the placement of those two shots. Can't ask for much more from Ishikawa. Three in a row from down 6-9. So Yulia, having watched this tournament so far, seeing these two play today, what are you feeling right now? Like always, it's easier to play than to watch it from from outside. It's always I always had this feeling. Well, for me, Hirano is one of the 
best player right now. Best player right now. But then Ishikawa. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> then that happens. <laughs> no, they're very fast. They're, the game is very fast. I mean, Japan always had very good female players. But right now, I feel like they improved a lot on the, on the physical side, and also they're very fast. That's unfortunate. The serve before, though, was not a bad serve, and Ishikawa just destroyed it. It puts a little extra pressure on Miu Hirano, trying to keep the serve precise, half long to the forehand of her left-handed opponent. It finds the net 11 to 9. Ishikawa takes it. So what are you expecting for game two, Yulia? I think we will see more of uh, Hirano in the second one, in the second game. Although Kasu I can see Kasumi is very concentrated and she's, she's the aggressive one. She's trying to not to play Hirano in her backhand, if you have seen. She, she tried to play more short to her forehand, to her middle, only in extreme situation or, or when she was obligated, she was playing in her backhand as Hirano's backhand is very strong and uh, especially if she's playing crossed, she will take Ishikawa out of the table. It's funny you mentioned the pressure that watching is more intense than playing a lot of the times. How much of that do you think has to do with when you're playing, you're in the driver's seat, you can actually affect the outcome of the match, whereas when you're watching, you have essentially no control, just shy of heckling, using a flash in the crowd. Obviously heavily frowned upon. If someone did that intentionally, they'd probably be ejected from the building. I saw that happen to Waldner once at, I think, Match Point, Swedish National Championships just a few years ago. Wow, the receive game, forehand flip from Ishikawa, playing in form right now, on point. Very smart backhand parallel. <laughs> Talked about the short strokes that Kasumi Ishikawa has. But earlier today, also about her service variation. She's very bold in her serves. Serves that kick either way, not afraid to play long, fast serves. Solid shot from Hirano, but still not the forehand flip kills that we've seen from her last week. Again, Ishikawa telling herself to play wisely, tapping that head. Many reactions she has today. It's quite expressive. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be a new thing. I guess Ishikawa quite expressive more and more. I don't know if you saw the picture of her spilled out on the table after that ball came down from the edge of the racket. Yeah. She's not afraid to express herself, that's for sure. Of course, right now, she's not only playing against her teammates, she's playing against the Asian champion. So the will to win against her, it's even, it's even higher right now. I'm seeing Hirano a little bit unsecure this match. I think that's one thing that Ishikawa is doing quite well is putting the pressure on. And like any time you're playing someone who's just a strong, strong player, 
you know, forcing them out of their comfort zone, causing them some hesitation. It's, you don't see Ma Long lose often, but if someone can make him hesitant, they have a chance. So that insecurity that you're seeing, the hesitation on the side of Hirano, is credit to Ishikawa for essentially handcuffing her and forcing, dictating how the points will go. Ishikawa feels far more in control, right? That's a serve to break the, the rhythm. That was a fault, I believe. I think Hirano was called for a fault service. Ooh, just missing. Every once in a while, you see that ball that comes out wide on the net, but because the tension is greater near the post, it redirects it inwards, tries to punch it back. Yeah, I just heard the word fault, and it seemed like the point went the other way. It's the first fault yeah, we've I seen. I didn't realize, I didn't hear it. That was pretty quick. Back edge of the table, go men, go men, sorry, sorry. That's what she said in Japanese. Kasumi Ishikawa speaking three languages. Mandarin, her second and English her third, a little bit more distant. That's why she said go men, go men. She wasn't cheering for men, just letting you know. Very critic with herself. She's yeah, quite self-critical indeed. Second serve here after the service fault was called. I didn't have a chance to see the umpire to see the hand signal for what the service fault was. Watching the serves, I'll try to guess. That was high enough, maybe the trajectory. I mean, there's so many, you know, tossing the ball vertically. Many so many different reasons. We saw Timo Bull warned for tossing inside the table. Maybe playing the ball over the table. It's tough to tell if it was the toss or the contact. Hey. There's that hesitation you talk about. This is not the flip game that we're used to from Hirano. The body language, the facial expression right now. She needs to find some energy. She doesn't have a coach in the corner to help her, though. There's the shot. That looks more like Miu Hirano from last week and the start of this tournament. For the whole tournament so far. Until now. One game point saved. Four more to go. Ooh, beautiful shot. Ishikawa hangs in there for the backhand rip to win the point. You know, that 3-7 point would have been 4-6. Different game, and mentally, as you mentioned, it can be quite distracting. You know, Huni, Hunor Such, right? Playing against Maharu Yoshimura, had a real chance after beating the top seed, Jung Young Shik, but found himself in trouble with the serves, and you said it was quite a distracting factor, right? Yes, once you miss the service, you're like, you're losing your, your balance. You don't really know what to do and you don't really focus on the on the tactic you just want to give the ball on the table it, sometimes you're even afraid to 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 serve that girl with the white shirt and the cell phone is Sohyo Wan's sister Sohyo Young promoter for table tennis here in Korea quite you're an avid sports fan what's that you're quite familiar with everybody around here you know you come to a place a few times talk to some people we actually played a match at a club. Hi. We never played a match. You played a match against everybody. Let me know when you're ready. Got my rackets with me as always. And don't make excuses about not having yours because I have two with me just in case. Can't play with high heels. Ah, barefoot, got it. I'm like, I have your size shoe right here. See if Hirano turns things around, gains some confidence. Seems to be a bit more confident out here with that serve coming long, turning from the middle. The 
final shot of that rally for Mew Hirano is the Mew Hirano that I've seen a lot, but the first several shots in this rally, a bit reactionary, a little bit more defensive, she, she really had to force herself to play so aggressively with that backhand. Ishikawa's placement is very solid, finding the middle of Mew Hirano. This is an example of where you might see a chop block, right? A spinny ball deep to the backhand corner. Kokiniwa, but a chop block that Malong, Adriana Diaz. Chop blocker crew. Stop! Stop! Two, She's playing her more in the middle, not, don't give her the advantage to play in the backhand, and so Hirano is not able to play cross. For middle, it's harder to play so crossed. You have the angle is shorter. Right, and we've seen a lot of players fail trying to turn their body to create that opportunity. This is a much better rally. This is the pace that both of the players can play at. When Hirano brings her A game out here, Masumi Ishikawa isn't, say, locking her up and handcuffing her once again in these rallies. Quick decision. I think that's a big part of what it comes down to for Hirano. Last week, she made so many quick decisions. There's very little hesitation. That second shot there, that backhand again. Quick decisions, very confident, decisive backhand. The placement on that opening forehand flip was just enough to force Kasumi Ishikawa into a weak shot from the hip. Deep into the backhand corner. Despite losing that point, I like the initiative that Mew Hirano shows there. She's going for the shots. I also think Ishikawa is provoking her. Yeah, she's clever like that. Rally and side to side, Ishikawa so quick in the footwork. earlier about what do I see as improvement in the, in uh, female table tennis well I was telling it earlier also that physical helps a lot and you can see all these Asian players moving so fast <laughs> and they improve physically a lot I'm trying to think outside of Japan and China I think Japan and China stand out to me within Asia as making these improvements. Yeah, Kasumi Ishikawa is everywhere on the court right now. She's anticipating well, short strokes and moving quickly. Watch how quickly she comes back from this backhand. Again, these efficient strokes, I think that's a big part of it, timing on the ball. Knowing how to get your power without using too much energy and forcing yourself to have to recover more. Left, four, seven. Left, four, seven. Is that three? Let services in a row. Yes. We saw two lead services and then a service error earlier today. This is feeling like trouble for Mew Hirano right now.
after such a beautiful receive left short on the forehand side. Kasumi Ishikawa can do whatever she wants right now. She's got six game points for a three to zero lead. Almost whatever she wants. Finally misses a shot. We haven't seen Miu Hirano in this situation for a long time. That's right. Eleven to five, a dominant performance in game three. Ishikawa very focused. It's all business out here. One game down, one more to go for a complete shutout against the most most watched player on the planet right now. Again, Miu Hirano shocking the table tennis world last week in Wuxi, China. And right now, Wuxi's got trouble because it's 3-0 for Kasumi Ishikawa. Also, it's true that at this age, I mean, with 17, playing without the coach can influence a little bit. Let's say when you're a little older, then you have your, your own experience and you know more about your game and you're able to to see the strengths and weakness of the opponent and yourself. But when you're younger, it's more difficult to, to realize it. And you need somebody to help you acknowledge it. Yeah, it definitely helps. Again, with age comes experience Hi. and wisdom. You know, at the same time, Miu Hirano, one of a few players from Japan who's not 20 years old yet, not even close, and still has a lot of international experience. And playing the world tour so much, I mean, you see Japan versus Japan matches quite a lot because of their heavy participation. And whenever it's Japan versus Japan, they're not gonna have a coach in the corner. So this shouldn't be super strange for Miu Hirano. I mean, just shaking my head at the percentage of shots right now Ishikawa is making. It's so impressive. This is like the opposite of what you would have expected coming into this match. It looked like she already gave up. You know, we talked earlier about the body language and the facial expression of Miu Hirano, and it's almost like the fighting spirit has been sucked out of her. But the fight is very well alive in Kasumi Ishikawa, and here's a timeout for Miu Hirano. It's a 3-0 differential we see, you know, quite commonly, especially with players on their own, calling their own timeout. Down 0-3 in a troubled game or in a match where they're already behind in games. This is the, la the last chance, chance. She knows it's now or never. Although we, we, we are witnessing a different Hirano than the previous match earlier today. Also, it's true after the last week, it's difficult to, to maintain this level during a longer period of time. I'm, I'm sure the Asian Championship was very intensive and it had a long preparation, so it's, it's difficult sometimes. It's not an excuse, but I mean, that could have a, an influence also on her. Yeah, I've heard that from several of the players actually, that coming straight from the Asian Championships, there has been a bit of, from injury, to fatigue from the players. And Miyuki Rano played more matches than anyone except one person in singles. <laughs> Big point right out of the timeout for Kasumi Ishikawa to continue to stay in control. She's got her pinned to the mat right now, both shoulders on the ground. Even that one? This is the puzzled look. I mean, haven't seen Miu Hirano this puzzled in some time. Ball sits up a little bit. She's like, eh? What? I think that's literally, that's what would be said. Eh? Oh, 
although everybody's uh, watching Hirano right now, we cannot take credit away from Ishikawa, which she has played perfectly since the, the first point. Right, I mean, she's playing incredibly well. She knows exactly what she has to do, she sticks to it, and she does it well. You know, I've seen Ishikawa play some incredible matches. I've seen her have some tough losses, actually, to Korea's Choi Ho-ju. And a few others along the way. But everyone has their ups and downs. It's not to say that the whole turn, I mean, Yuhi Rano's played well this tournament. She played very well this tournament. But right now, Kasumi Ishikawa's playing much better. And she started well, but just Ishikawa was better. I say this for the world that is watching with hope. The hope that Miu Hirano can be the leader of, I would say, the first real challenge to the Chinese women. <laughs> that I don't believe it is over. She's dominated here in this match, but everyone has a tough match. And again, credit to Kasumi Ishikawa for just completely shutting out Miu Hirano. <laughs> this would be a great score to play an exhibition point. Don't see it too often in the women's game. Can you recall the last time you saw an exhibition point in a tournament in a women's game, Yulia? Stop! An exhibition? Talk about that in a bit. Ishikawa 11 to two. Four straight games over the Asian champion of 2017 and the Women's World Cup winner, Miu Hirano, beaten by teammate Kasumi Ishikawa. And what a performance from Ishikawa, second seed in this tournament. I mean, three of the four best players in the world, or three of the four best Chinese players in the world, and therefore three of the four best players in the world could not stop Miu Hirano. Kasumi Ishikawa did it like it was a walk in the park. And I mean, she worked hard and she played quality shots, but she was consistently stronger. The first game, 11-9, and then in descending order, 6-5 and 2. I think in this case, the first set made the difference. Well, this reminds me a lot of the Olympic final for the men's. Zhang Zike and Ma Long, an incredible game one. And if Zhang Zike had taken game one, it feels like the confidence would have been there. Ma Long would have been less confident. And who knows what would have happened. Coming into it, Ma Long was still the favorite to win. But again, like you said, game one really sets the tone and gives some players the confidence, the advantage. But Kasumi Ishikawa survives and moves on to the women's singles final.